At this point, you know, we've got some graphics and lighting and colors, we're running around and animating and doing all this cool stuff. We've got spikes, we've got orbs. The one thing we're missing is we can't win and lose the game. It's not actually a game at this point. It's technically just a toy. And a toy is, uh, our game is a toy you can win, right? So let's make it winnable. So we're going to turn this uh, into a game that we can actually win and lose. And so we already have these spikes. We already have um, these orbs. And so let's make them do something. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my scripts here. We're going to take a look at the script. We kept talking about the script called Player Health. So let's take a look. It's a real simple script here. First off, we're just going to need to provide some, some death particle effects here. So when the player dies, and I've had a few people come up today and said, you should have kept the blood. We need more blood in this game, which ha has me worrying about you a little bit. So just, you know, if you need to talk to someone, you can just talk to me if you need to. That's fine. But to make things maybe a little kinder and more gentler is our spike death it will be greeted with some fun little white particles as opposed to blood and gore. So we're going to just spawn some, some white particles there. Then inside on trigger under 2D, uh, if we if we collide with something that's not a trap, or we collide, or the player is no longer alive, we don't do anything. Otherwise, we say, okay, the player is no longer alive. We instantiate those uh, death effects. We set the player game object to false, and then we talk to the game manager, the audio manager, which don't exist yet, but they will. And we're gonna say, hey, game manager, if you're out there, you know the player died. And hey, audio manager, if you're out there, play some audio for us. Now, I wanted to kind of take a second here. You may have noticed that we're doing our collision check this way. A lot of times you might see like if collision.tag equals uh, traps, or uh, we use a tag there. The reason we're not doing that, again, is we want to avoid string comparisons, especially if we're dealing with mobile. We just don't want to use strings. We want to avoid it everywhere we can. So instead of doing strings, I am storing the traps layer as an integer. And inside start, I'm saying, hey, layer mask, give me the layer mask of this particular layer. It's going to give me an integer. And then I'm just going to say, all right, Collision, what's the layer of your game object? Is it this layer? If that's it, then we've hit a trap. No string comparisons. So it's much more efficient, especially if we end up doing these quite a few times. And so it's all about efficiency there. So I'm going to go back to Robbie here. And I'll click on Robbie, and I'm going to add the player health script. I'm going to do a little bit differently just to show you there's another way we can do this. I'm going to click add component, and then I'm going to go down to scripts. So add component scripts. This is going to list every script I have in alph alphabetical order. So I'm going to click player health. Now, the player health script says, all right, well, what are my death VFX prefab? I'll click on my VFX folder. Right here is my death particles, which I'm going to drop right on here. So now this is going to handle uh, allowing my player to die. So if I hit play, my character's there, and if I run into these spikes, poof, dead. All right, easy enough. But then nothing happens. So you, you made a permadeath game. Permadeath, right? <laughs> this is the Dark Souls of, uh, of Spelunky, or Super Meat Boy, or whatever. Um, but even more hardcore, because it destroys your character. So there you go, you're done, you're never allowed to play again. Uh, so we obviously are going to need some way to start playing again, but let's talk about winning real quick. So earlier, when designing the levels, I mentioned that you'd want to have an area like this, some place where we're going to place a door, and if you get past the door, you're going to win. And if you collect enough orbs, the door will open, and that's how this game's going to work. So I'm going to go to my props folder, and I have a door, which I'm going to drag right onto here. And this door has a few pieces. So first, there's this door parent object that's got a door script in this animator. And then it has a door sprite, and then this win zone, that it's just a, a trigger collider that has a script that says, hey, the player ran into the win zone. Hey, game manager, the player won. And that's all it really does. So obviously, I don't have any means of opening this door yet. Even if I collect all the orbs right now, nothing will happen because I, I don't have any means of tracking that. But just for the sake of showing it, I'm going to run down here to where the door is and say, OK, I can't obviously get through the door. But if I go to my door sprite and just you know cheat, turn it off right now, and run in here, I'm going to see, hey, player one down here at the bottom. I won the game. Congratulations, me. This means so much. I wasn't expecting it. Uh, and then, but I could still <laughs> run back out and die, right? So, you know, winning doesn't mean anything yet. So now we need something to control our game. We can control the player and the player dying and all that, but we need to control the flow of the game. And so we're going to start talking about a game manager. And this code can be a little tricky if you're not a programmer. 
uh, and can be a little infuriating if you are a programmer and you don't like certain uh, design patterns, but we'll see. Uh, but let's look at our game manager. So our game manager is going to need to do a few things. So first off, its main purpose is storing how many deaths our players had, how long the player's been playing the game. It has to know how many orbs we have in a scene. And it needs to persist that information. So when the player dies, instead of trying to reset everything and move the player back to start, we're just going to reload the level we're currently in. As such, we lose all of our references to scene objects, and we need to persist data and things like that. And so we're going to set this up as an object that's not destroyed. But we're also going to set this up as something called a singleton pattern, which basically means it's going to be accessible with some statics and whatever. Some people right now are just like, ah, oh, singletons are the worst thing ever, and I disagree, but whatever. Uh, and so let's look at how we have this set up, all right? So first things first, we have a static game manager reference. So a game manager is going to hold a reference to itself and a static variable that's private. It's not sharing that out. And we're going to use some static methods to give other things access to its functionality. It's going to contain a list of orbs. It's going to contain a reference to a door, like the door we just added to the scene. And this other thing that doesn't exist yet, called a scene fader, we'll add that later. It's going to store the number of deaths, the total game time, and if the game is currently over. And like a true singleton, uh, or like mostly a true singleton, not quite, it's going to say, hey, if there's another singleton, uh, if there's another game manager and I'm not it, then, then this is going to destroy itself, because there can only be one game manager. If there happens to be two, one of those game managers will destroy themselves. All right, so we just keep a reference there. If that's not the case, then this becomes the current game manager, and we create a new list of orbs, and we say, hey, do not destroy this game object on scene load. So this manager will persist in between scene loads forever, carrying with it all of our data. Inside update, if the game isn't over, we're just going to update some time and tell a UI manager, which right now does not exist. And then we have a bunch of these public static bool methods. So you might have noticed in player input, where it says, uh, hey, game manager, is the game over? Uh, if it is, you know, return. Well, game manager didn't exist, but it also didn't throw an error because we have a static method that says, hey, if there isn't a current game manager, just say, no, nah, the game's not over yet. Otherwise, return whether or not the game really is over, right? And all of our public static methods do that. So register scene fader. Hey, is there a current one? If not, then don't do anything. But if there is, then utilize it. Now I'm going to skip this scene fader one because we don't have a scene fader yet. But I'm going to talk about this method here, public vo static void registered door. Now the game manager is set up. It sees the door. It sees the orbs, whatever. The player dies. The scene reloads. The game manager was not destroyed and recreated. It persisted. As such, it no longer knows what the door is. It loses that reference because now it's a new scene with a new door. And so instead of the game manager trying to find the door and the orbs uh, every time it reloads the scene, all of these objects are going to, when they load up, say, hey, game manager, I'm the door. Hey, game manager, I'm an orb. They will register themselves with the game manager, and the game manager will keep track of all that. All right, so that's how this works. So the door is going to say, game manager, I am the door. And so the game manager goes, cool, all right. So then when it's time to open the door, you're it. I'll open you. So we just keep track of that here. Same with register orbs. We're going to say, all right, if we don't already have this orb, let's add it to our list of orbs. And we'll update some UI once it exists. doesn't exist yet. And the player grabs the orb. Again, if we don't have that orb, we return. Otherwise, we remove that orb. And then if we have no more orbs left, guess what? Hey, locked door, it's time for you to open up. Players grabbed all of the orbs. When the player dies, we increment our deaths. We tell the UI. Uh, we say our fader scene out if it exists. And then the second most important part of the scene manager is to reload the scene. But we don't want to reload it right away. We want to, you know, let the scene fade out and the player to see the particles and to see you know, the new death toll and have a second to think, oh, man, I suck at this game and feel bad about themselves before it reloads. So we're going to invoke it after a short delay, uh, which we have defined as a public variable called death sequence duration. In player one, it's going to play some audio and do all that fun stuff. When the scene restarts, it's going to clear out the current collection of orbs because we're about to have a new scene with all new orbs. It's going to play some scene restart audio, and then it's going to say, hey, scene manager, load the scene. What scene? Well, whatever the current scene is, load it again. And it'll just reload the scene we're currently in. And that's an easier way of setting all that stuff up. That's a lot of talking, but it's a really easy step. I'm going to go ahead and just click on my hierarchy. I'm going to click Create, Empty. I don't need a game object that does anything in particular. I'm going to name this one Game Manager. 
And if I go to my scripts folder, you will notice that my game manager script has this cog icon. For whatever reason, if you name a script game manager, it gets that icon. So that must be a common thing to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag my game manager script here. There's nothing for me to set up on there. But now I'm going to try this out. And so that I don't have to get all of my orbs, I'm going to go into the platforms and I'm going to reduce it down so I only have one shrine. Um, that way I don't have to run around and avoid all of these spikes because I'm not particularly good at this game. We'll just disable those so I only have one. All right. So I'm going to press play. And so the first thing I'm going to check, okay, I die. I could die before, but now after 1.5 seconds, I respawn because the level reloads itself. There we go. And we can see the game manager is in its special scene called the don't destroy on load section right up here. Now I'm going to run a bit and crouch. Uh, and let me take my scene view, my scene view over here to watch the door. There you go. And now my game view, I'm going to grab this orb, the only orb. Boom. Scene goes up. Door goes up like that. Plays a little open animation. And now, hey, the player won. And now I can't run around and die anymore after I've won the game because the game manager says, the game is over. My player input script says, hey, game manager, is the game over? It is. Stop reading input. So it all just automatically uh, controls that, and I, I can't die now. So that's good. Uh, and so this all is working. All right. So that was a lot of talking. It's a pretty straightforward step. So the first thing you're going to do is you are going to select the Robbie game object in your scene, and you're going to add to this the player health script. You can do that by going to add component scripts and then player health script. It'll list them all out or just dragging the player health script on. On the player health script, you are going to apply the death particles to the death VFX prefab property. At this point, you can die. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your props folder and you're going to locate the door uh, prop and you're going to drag that into your scene. Uh, hopefully, you created a place for your door to be. If not, maybe add one because the door also has our wind zone to it. So I'm going to just drag that in there and place it in your scene. And then finally, you are going to click Create, Create Empty, name the empty game object Game Manager, and drag the Game Manager script on it. And at that point, save your scene, test it out. You should be able to collect all of your orbs and the door will open. If you run into spikes, you will die.